Ah, uh, don't mind me, ladies and gentlemen. I'm just putting on my brand new crown as I self-proclaim and self-appoint myself as the Centurion King. I love how that sounds. Two people in my local Yu-Gi-Oh community that I know of so far are already trying to build Centurion, and uh, I like to think I started a trend. <laughs> You're going to have to excuse my voice. It still feels like I got a cactus back there. Uh, but we're going to talk about the 2024 ban list as your brand new Centurion King brings you this video. So let's dive on into it, shall we? Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It is your host with the biggest ultra ball of the most, Avery LR32 here, and destroy the ever living boo boo stain off that like and subscribe button as we climb even higher the 1300 ladder. All the new subscribers from that 10th place deck profile are probably going to be really weirded out by that intro, but this is what you signed up for, Sugar Boo Bear. So be sure that you're hitting that subscribe button, that ding dong notification bell. I really do appreciate all of the support. So now that we have our invite and now that we're just kind of chilling for the rest of the year, I wanted to talk about our next balance because I feel like we're not going to be getting another list until probably January, honestly, more like February. Uh, 2024, uh, and we're just going to be riding on into this new year with what I believe is going to be a big ban list with a lot of changes going into this new year. You know, keep in mind that we get Maze of Millennium in January, and then a few weeks or so after we get Maze of Millennium, we get Phantom Nightmare, which has the Ing Master Pack Bit, which is a level 8 Synchro Monster that's good support for Centurion, and of course, Maze of Millennium has Bonfire Transaction Rollback which is going to be insane, I predict. And so um, I tried to make a list of things I feel should be hit uh, moving into this new format. It's not a prediction of what I think Konami is going to do. It's just more a uh, discussion piece, more or less, um, which reminds me I meant to put on the triple tactics cards on here, but we'll talk about that. So let's go ahead and go into the band cards. First and foremost, the Ishizu cards. These got banned in the OCG for good reason. You know, uh, the fact that Aigido and Kelbeck mill you five, and one of them can mill you five more if exchange of the spirits in the grave, which you may think isn't that good, but the fact that you could just simply go like, Foolish Barrel Goods, dump exchange of the spirit. Oh, hey, I'm going to make you mill 10 cards. Like, mill decks have never been that good outside of now, like, Runic. But the fact that they have one card that can potentially mill you 10 if you decide to play Exchange of the Spirit. But more because of the fact that it's just a freebie mill 5 and get all of your tier plays going like crazy. Not to mention uh, Keldeo and Medora being able to shuffle back cards so you have Graveyard Interruption on either player's turn is just insane. Uh, these are some of the most broken cards ever made in the game. They need to be taken out back and shot. Uh, along with that, uh, King Calamity. Now... You're probably thinking, Avery, you just basic, I don't even want to call it top regional because it's not top eight. We should have got top four if I didn't misplay, but not to toot my own horn about that, but we'll just call it top 16. Avery, you just got top 16 with Centurion. Why do you want to hit King Calamity? <sighs> to be honest with you, Centurion isn't just King Calamity Turbo. There were matches, especially against decks like Rescue Ace that are more back row heavy, where I did want to drop King Calamity. I wanted to drop a Cosmic Blazar in like attack or defense with its 4,000 ass and just sit on it. So King Calamity is not the be-all end-all. Is it the be-all end-all, I would say, 99% of the time? Yes. Is it easy to summon? Yes. Should it be banned? Probably. Uh, you know, people, for honestly, I've had players forget that sometimes... Uh, it only hits the field, or it affects cards on the field. Sometimes I've had players think it affects everything. It's only on the field. So if you're playing a heavy back row deck, that's really not going to bother you. If you're playing Labyrinth and you get hit with King Clamity, you're just going to be like, set, 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 go, and then you just play all your traps. Uh, so in that regard, I, I feel like King Clamity is not all that good. But the fact that especially the Centurion deck, under five summons can drop out a King Clamity, that's an issue. That's a really big issue that needs to be taken care of. Um, you know, if you're playing something like, say, even the new Fire King stuff, you know, they're not really trap-based from what I've seen. How do you deal with King Calamity if you're not playing something like Book of Eclipse or uh, some sort of negator to stop the Crimson Dragon? You know, anything like that. Super Poly, even, since the Legati and the Crimson Dragon of Lights. 
If you don't have those cards in your hand, you're kind of just staring down at Crimson Dragon all because you didn't open up any outs. So take that for what you will. And Imperm isn't really an out because if you're not a Momo like me, then the Centurion player is going to wait till you commit a card to the field so that you can't Imperm the opponent because you don't have any cards up. So Imperm is not even a good answer to the Crimson Dragon slash King Calamity in that regard. So I think hitting King Calamity, it still makes Centurion playable. It's Cosmic Blazar spam plus with 15 hand traps, maybe like a TC Boo Floodgate in the main. And then you go from there. You know, the deck is still very much playable. So along with that also being banned, I, I don't know if this is going to be a hot take or not, but Dimension Shifter. I feel that Dimension Shifter is a hand trap that had good intentions upon design, but the issue is of how many decks can abuse it and the decks that are hurt by it just auto lose to it. Now you could make the argument that decks that auto lose to Shifter maybe aren't necessarily built the best. But when you look at decks like Dimension Shifter, or Dimension Shifter, Tier Element, and I would say to a lesser extent, Dragon Link, those decks rely on the graveyard a lot. So if you hit them with Shifter and they auto lose to Shifter because you know they don't play cross out or they don't see the call by the grave, which is you know obviously a one of. Should they just be forced to lose because of the deck that they chose to play? I don't know if that's necessarily healthy. And I've seen a lot of people lately in the community saying Shifter's a busted card. It's great when you open it and it just kills an opponent's deck to where it's just a turn skip, basically. But is that really a good thing? Similar to King Calamity. King Calamity is good when it goes off, but is that necessarily a good thing that it's just basically a turn skip for the opponent. Like I said in my deck profile, I summoned the thing like seven times, and every time I did, I won. So that should speak for itself, Sugar Boo Bear. Is it a good thing that I won because of the King Calamity? It's not necessarily healthy, I would argue. So I think that hitting Shifter in some regard, preferably banned. I, I think really needs to happen. I don't think you can hit it to two and especially not one because then it becomes a max C factor where it's like you just opened up the shifter, you opened the one of, like congratulations. I feel at that point, it, you're kind of going into some luck sacky territory. Along with other stuff getting banned, uh, like I said, there's a lot. Uh, Eradicator. Now I'm sure some people are gonna say, Avery, Eradicator hasn't been a problem. Like why hit Eradicator now? That's exactly the issue. It was an issue in 2012 when Dark World came out when your boy was playing Eradicator then. It was an issue when Jeremy Mitchell won Nationals, basically because of Eradicator. Uh, it's going to crop its ugly head up from time to time. It needs to be taken care of. Uh, this is going to be a hot take, and I only say this because I saw this in a TCG Player article about a year ago, and it makes a lot of sense, and that's terraforming. Terraforming, if you think about it, gives every single deck in the game that plays a field spell an extra copy of their field spell. Please tell me how many decks in the modern game of Yu-Gi-Oh! that are meta decks don't play a field spell. I, I'll, I'll wait. Tier Element has two of them things. Visa Starfrost has like what? The archetype lore as a whole, like five or six of them things. Uh, stand, uh, stand Up Centurion. Uh, Centurion has a field spell. Runic has two copies of the field spell. Granted, technically they got more because of Hugin and Runic Tip and whatever. But uh, Terraforming adds an extra copy of the field spell in general. And I feel that if Konami wanted to go to the route of hitting deck consistency broadly, I could see terraforming getting banned. Do I think it's going to happen? No. Uh, like I said, I got this from a TCG player article. I think it was Zach Butler that wrote it like a year ago. I could be wrong on who wrote it, but it was an interesting uh, position to take on a card like terraforming that hasn't really seen any talk besides me since. Um, and I think it's just an interesting point to bring up that terraforming is just such generically a good card because Let's be honest, every meta deck in the game, it seems like, has a damn field spell. Why not hit the consistency overall? I don't know. Uh, but that's all that I have for the bands. Let's move on to the limiteds now. So limited, I have runic tip. We've got to hit runic more in some way. I've been calling for tip, just the tip, to go to one for quite some time. Tip needs to be taken out back and shot. It needs to go to one. Pot of Prosperity to one. We need to hit these consistency cards. I think the Desires to two is really stupid. I think it could go to three and be fine. But Pot of Prosperity, the decks that play Prosperity are already planning in advance when they put the card in their deck and they're sitting down to play What's, what three to six cards they're going to be banishing. So it's really never an issue. Oh, you can't draw cards. 
they probably don't need to draw cards because they just got one of six anyway. They're going to combo and build their board and whoop your ass anyway. <laughs> so uh, just having this card as a consistency factor is just insane. I think Prosperity needs to be hit in some way, shape, or form. I don't think the two really does anything. You got to hit the card to one. Uh, next up, we got to have a hit to Unchain. Unchained Abomination, the searcher uh, that adds one from my deck or grave to hand, whatever it is. I think that that needs to go to one. I'm not an Unchained expert, admittedly. Um, so I don't know if there's any other hits that really need to happen. I'll let you let me know in the comments down below what other cards should be hit in Unchained and other decks in general. Um, we've got to hit the consistency of Unchained. Like Unchained doesn't care about Droll. It doesn't care about Nib in theory because they just make the Wave High King and everything else. Like it just doesn't matter. Um, and they can play Shifter because their cards don't say when they go to the grave, just when they're destroyed, so they can activate the Banish Pile. Because logic. <laughs> so... Yeah, we, we need to hit some of this stuff. Maybe some of the new stuff out of Duelist Nexus, but I don't think Konami's going to go for that. Next up here is uh, just something potential. Maybe the Welcome Labyrinth Traps. I don't know. I don't know if Labyrinth's really done enough to warrant being hit. Um, something to keep in mind. Maybe we hit the Labyrinth Traps, the Welcome and Big Welcome. Maybe not. Just something I wanted to throw out there. Fenrir, I do think, needs to go to one. Fenrir is just an insane, uh, generically good card. It's like another Pankratops. Um, Fenrir, it needs to be hit. I don't think it needs to be banned, but I think hitting it to one, giving it the Pankratops treatment would be good. Um, Tier Element Cash, I don't know if shit, if it should really go to one, because we're already hitting the Ishizu cards on this type of list, so maybe it'd be fine at three. Um, and then for a hit to Rescue Ace, I'm thinking either Emergency or Airlifter, following what the OCG did, um, because the deck is pretty deadly consistent, especially with the Dio Bellstar package. And I don't think Konami's going to hit the Dio Bellstar package because, you know, they want to sell all the fire stuff that they're printing. So Emergency or Airlifter getting hit, I think would be good. I don't think they're really going to go for Hydrant. Maybe both will go to one. Maybe one will go to one. Or maybe they just put Airlifter at two and I look like a Momo. Uh, uh, finally, here at Unlimited, what is it that you want? Let me know down in the comments because everything... That's semi-limited, could either be at one or three, besides malicious, in my opinion. Um, the sprite really hasn't done much. I think starter could go back to three and be fine. Um, like I said, I think that this is going to be a scorched earth list where we're going to see a lot of things change to get us ready for 2024, get us ready for Phantom Nightmare, um, and the Cell Maze of Millennium because Transaction Rollback is just busted. And I think Transaction Rollback with Eradicator would just be absolutely insane, ladies and gentlemen. Um yeah, I think that uh, I think that these are a lot of things that we could see happen on the ban list. Um, and maybe there are some things I'm just totally wrong about. Maybe that there's something I missed. Like I said, I'm still trying to get over this cold. So yeah, um, I'm sure there's something I've missed here. But guys, let me know what you think down in the comments below. Are you excited for this next ban list? I personally am because I think that this format's been healthy and I think it can only get healthier. Guys, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.